Hey, how are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton, and I am so happy to be with you here today. We are going to be talking about energetic cords. I got a question from someone, and I put it up on the screen, but it's very blurry, and you would not be able to read it. But essentially, she said, can you comment on managing or cutting etheric cords? And also, she says she's an empath, and she's definitely becoming aware now of when people are creating cords and connecting those cords to her. And she's curious about whether negative entities can connect with us etherically, and so on and so forth. So first, let me talk about energetic cords. And of course, this is a condensed version of the matter, but just so that you know, anyone with whom you've had a profound, meaningful, dynamic, energetic, important relationship. So anyone that you've had that kind of a relationship with, you created a cord with. You didn't only blend with them in the mind or in the body, but you also blended with them in the energy. And this is perfectly natural. And so when we are sitting down across from somebody, of course, we are communicating through articulation. For those of us who can, we are expressing ourselves in the way that we do, and they are receiving that. And they do the same, and we receive that. But so much more is going on than just the words or the actions of the person. There's a, an entire energetic communication that's happening as well. And you might have experienced this already in your life. For example, have you ever met someone who looked fine, seemed okay, and everything they were saying was made sense and was okay, but you felt something in the communication of the energy, like, mm, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not buying it. Or you seem like you're an okay person, but I feel really yucky and icky around you. That's because the energies between the two people, between you and that person, the energy is talking. And you should know that about energy. Energy talks, it communicates, it moves, it transfers, it's alive. Spiritual energy, that is. And so there's this communication that takes place. And through that exchange of energy, cords can be created. You can have active cords with people who are alive or people who are dead. You can have active cords with people that are in your life right now and also people who were in your life decades ago. Time and space, distance, uh, context doesn't really matter. You have cords with all kinds of people and also with beings. We have etheric cords with our animals in life and in death. We can have etheric cords with thought forms, egregores, patterns of energy that have been created from thought, but that live on now. We can create we can create cords and we can be connected to that through those cords. Now, what the cords do, is facilitate a relationship energetically. And in specific, you can send energy and energetic communication through the cords from you to the other person, and they can send energy and communication from them to you. And sometimes this is great. The cords that I have with my husband, that knowing that doesn't require articulation, that sensing relationship that I have with him is lovely and is, is a great part of the relationship. But the cords that I might still have with an ex, this is not so beneficial because that means they're re they're sending information. They're sending energy and I'm taking the literal energetic hits from that. And I've actually had relationships like this, maybe a friend or maybe a lover that I had to step away from and I severed the cord. On my end, I severed that cord, but they did not sever the cord and they continued to attach the cord to me. And I could always tell because I could feel them in the energy. I could feel them in the frequency. I'm familiar with what people feel like, people that I know. I know what they feel like in the energy. I'm familiar with their energetic communication. So when an old friend shows up in my awareness and I can feel the sensation of them, I know it's because they have attached a cord and it's up to me at that time to sever it. And likewise, I had an ex who I broke up with and this ex continued to attach cords. And this ex 
also sent things through the cords, not just communication, not just energy transfer, but like actual entities sent these entities through the cords. I would wake up in the middle of the night and there would be a being that was a loose representation of this person dressed like this person would dress, but like with this big distended crazy face and eyes and it was just a very disturbing, but that was the physical outpicturing of what that person was sending me through the cords. And of course, if you're seeing an entity in the room and you can connect that to somebody, you want to sever that cord. Energetic maintenance, therefore. Energetic hygiene is something that empaths talk a lot about, like keeping themselves clean because the world seeks to connect with you through social media, through programming that we're watching through different things that we're doing in places that we're going. I think nature can create etheric cords with you. There's all kinds of different things that are happening. It's up to you to maintain your own energetic hygiene. Now, if you become conscious of an attachment, like here, here comes that weird entity. He's standing in my room. I'm conscious of the attachment. I'm conscious that this person is creating cords and connecting them to me. I will do one of two things to send that away and to cut that cord. The first thing that I can do if I have the ability to is jump right into a shower. Did you know that water, that water cuts all electromagnetic cords. So if you've got any attachments and if they're alive, jumping under a shower or jumping into the pool, jumping into the river will cut all the cords immediately. Now, does that mean they don't reattach when you get out of the shower? No, they will, especially if the energy of the other person or thing is persistent. But while I'm under the water, I'll also do something like say the Lord's Prayer. Now, Edgar Casey said that the Lord's Prayer strengthened and balanced one or more chakras with each line. And so by saying the Lord's Prayer, whether you are a Christian or not, it doesn't matter. It's immaterial because the Lord's Prayer has become a thought form, a pattern that we can all connect to, which contains a certain quality of strength and divine power. By reciting the Lord's Prayer under the water, you're cleaning up all of your energy. So it's not just the connections uh, in your field, connecting to your aura. It's also the chakra system, what's happening within you. You can tune that up as well. And having an intention, having an intention, I'm severing these cords, perhaps saying a ritual like the Ho'oponopono prayer or your own prayer, which uh, articulates what you are doing in the ritual. I'm severing these cords. Notice that I'm using a hand motion. I often do this. If I feel like a big cord, somebody's connected to my hip, like Emily on the OC, new hip. Someone's connected to my hip, sever it. I sever it in my mind intentionally. I see it. And then I use my physical hand as well. Boom. And I, and I sever that cord and I'll do that all around my head, my body. Uh, another thing that I do that I think is really easy and we can all do this is I take a few moments, especially if I notice like I'm having reactions and feelings that are probably not my own. I woke up today and I felt really great, but all of a sudden I'm paranoid. Why? All of a sudden I'm really mad. Why? All of a sudden I'm fearful or full of grief. This is, and I have nothing to be grieving over. Why? This could be you receiving something through the cords or the field. And so you need to do some energetic hygiene. So if I notice that, like I'm being impacted or taking these energetic hits, I will take a few moments. I will slow my breathing down. Inhale five seconds, exhale five seconds. I will imagine myself drawing down beautiful divine golden white light from the heavens down through a pillar, if you will, that extends right into my head through the crown chakra and then into my body just filled with this beautiful pillar of white light and as it fills my body it begins to expand and I begin to take in more and more lights and I can feel the vibration of this light this um, electricity as it builds in my body, mind, and spirit until I'm full to the brim of this light. And then I let it overflow out of my body, mind, and spirit and into the aura, 
And soon my aura is filled with divine light and filled to the brim and overflowing again to fill the totality of the field, which is even bigger than the aura. And the field is like a sphere that we walk around the world in. And I feel the light as it fills this beautiful field. And then when the field is full, the body's full, the aura is full, the field is full of light, I begin to pulse, pulse. I very disrespectfully call this um, a spiritual kegel <laughs> or an energetic kegel. It's kind of like that if you're a woman, you know, pulse. That's kind of an inward thing. This is an outward thing. We are pulsing that light through the field. It's still streaming in through the crown into the system of who it is that we are, and we're pulsing it out. And every time we pulse out, it's clearing the debris. It's clearing the misalignments. It's repairing the perforations in the aura and in the energy. And most importantly, those cords pulse. They are being severed. And envision this. See this. Because see, the third eye, the third eye will show you exactly what's happening in the field. You'll, be, you'll begin to see where the, where the cords are, where the attachments are, where the spikes into your energy are, and where they're coming from. Observe all of this with the third mind and pulse, third eye rather, and pulse, pulse until the whole field is clean. And now you're not only clean, but you're high vibe. And guess what? Someone who is low vibration, who is attempting to attach a cord to you, will have a hard time doing so if you're walking around the planet high vibe. I do not worry about such things when I am in a season of my life where I am rocking my own dominion. When I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? I am that I am. I am the creator of my own life. I'm a magician. God said, let us create crystal in our image. And so it was. And I'm created in the image of the creator. Like when I'm walking around in that, just partying in my high frequency, I don't ever worry about attachments, entities, people, actual 3D. I don't ever worry about that. I, it, it, it creates the pathway forward for me. And it's a path of light. Oh, if I could just impress upon you sufficiently how important it is to be filled with light, your own light, let it shine. You have a source of this within yourself. You can bring it forward from the wellspring within you, by the way. You don't have to draw it down necessarily because you are divine. However it works for you, just fill yourself with that light. Walk around the planet. That's what a light worker is. That's how you can stay energetically clean. Now, in Hawaii, where I was born and raised, where my father was born and raised, where my grandfather was also, he, he grew up and raised all his family. In Hawaii, in Hawaii, we have a concept of uhane noho, and I'm not an ex expert of this, but it's the idea that certain entities and energies can enter into your field and they can enter into your body, like areas of physical wounding that you might have, mm -hmm. scarring or problems in the body. They can kind of wiggle their way into those spaces and take up residency and occupancy and start to impact you. So whether this is an attachment or a cord that's coming from someone else to you, or whether you're actually housing the attachment, housing the entity, housing the energy, guess what? Pulse it out. Energetic kegels, outward pulse. It'll clean it out and have the intention. Have the intention. There's a reason that scripture says, at the name of Jesus, the demons will flee. This isn't about Jesus or Christianity. It's about the name, the divine name of it, the energy of it, the sound of it is so high frequency and high vibration, Christ consciousness, that demons cannot abide it. So if you're walking around in the energy of the living name or the energy of your I am, I'm a magician, those Uhani Noho, they cannot, they're like, peace out. I don't, this house, it's not for me. And the light shines into the darkness and the darkness cannot tolerate that, cannot comprehend that, is antagonized by that. The key to the most profound energetic hygiene you can have and sustain, the key to psychic protection on all fronts is 
walking around the planet in the energy of exactly who you are as a divine being. That's it. Fill yourself with that. Hold that. Sustain that. Be that. And you will not have to worry. And for maintenance, fill up with that light from within and from the divine. Fill up with it and pulse it out and boom, all those cords are gone. Now, the thing about cords in closing is you sever them, but they can reattach, as I said. This requires maintenance and management. Fundamentally, though, it requires awareness. You have to be paying attention to how you're feeling and what your energy is doing so that you know when you need some of this maintenance, when you need some of your pulsing practice. Just because you sever doesn't mean they can't reattach, but you are in control of this. This is just, if anything, it's just kind of annoying sometimes. Oh, here comes new hip. <laughs> something's, something's funneling into my hip and I can feel it. I got a pain. Sometimes when somebody's attaching a cord, slow it down, spirit. Sorry. Start talking really fast. I apologize. Sometimes when somebody's attaching a big cord, you actually have a physical pain, like some weird uh, pain in your lower back, maybe in your rib, a headache, something like that could be more than just anomalous pain. It could be because there's an attachment. And if you feel something that is out of left field and doesn't make any sense in the, in the physical, pulse it out. I'm promising you this technique works. Anyway, thank you so much for the question. You asked that your name not be shared. I appreciate it. Again, I want to draw your attention to my textcac.com. Go to that website. You'll see a number. Text it. We will stay connected. You'll know when I'm going live. Drop in a video and you'll know what, what I'm thinking. Also, don't forget about me on Instagram because I'm there too. And I, show, I share pictures of myself from time to time. I mean, nobody wants to see all that. But I also share pictures of my dog and my baby, my husband, my daughter, and things that I'm doing. I just share more personal things there on Insta. So if you feel so inclined, connect with me there too. And until next time, please know that I have got nothing but love for you. And I do mean you. Bye, guys. Bye.